We have a very good vetting process, and you take a look at our cabinet and our secretaries. A very good vetting process, the president said. That was after the departure under a cloud of sorts of his previous acting defense secretary and two and a half years of massive staff and administration turnover. Our friends at Axios got a hold of some vetting notes from the Trump transition team, documents with red flag after red flag detailing swamp-like ties and background checks, cozy relationships with lobbyists, even domestic violence allegations missed or ignored in a rush job to fill administration vacancies. As one Axios editor put it, not only were many since scandalized cabinet secretary problems foreseeable, so foreseeable, they were actually foreseen. And as CNN's Tom Foreman reports, the president says he regrets one hire, but not for the reason you might think. A Republican document accusing a possible Homeland Security boss of taking donations from a group linked to white supremacy. Also from the Republican National Committee, an environmental protection chief plagued by allegations of coziness with big energy companies. And an agriculture secretary with serious conflicts of interest. All those damning assessments, not all proven true, show how a vetting team assembled by the RNC described candidates under consideration for the Trump administration many of whom ultimately got the jobs. This according to internal papers obtained by Axios on HBO, even as Trump was on NBC saying he has few regrets. If I had one do-over, it would be I would not have appointed Jeff Sessions to be attorney general. I, Donald John Trump. The Axios documents from early in Trump's term seem to foreshadow all the investigations and allegations to come painting the selection process as chaotic and laced with private suspicions, even amid the president's public praise for his entire team. Great job. She's fantastic. He's a great guy. Among other allegations in the vetting papers, now ousted Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke describing Trump as undefendable. Budget Director, now Acting Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney, saying Trump is not a very good person. And Energy Secretary Rick Perry describing Trumpism as a toxic mix of demagoguery, mean-spiritedness, and nonsense. Rick Perry, you're doing a great job. We're proud of you. The Republican National Committee is dismissing the report, telling Axios these over two-year-old documents were initial pre-interview briefings, and those selected would have gone through more thorough background checks. And the White House is characterizing the papers as disgruntled establishment D.C. swamp creatures' cowardly leaks. Still, the papers would seem to be even more evidence that Donald Trump does not run the tight ship he claims. Rather, his ship is full of turmoil, accusations, and yes, a lot of leaks. Jake? You bet. Tom Foreman, thanks so much. So this was great in the Axios piece. One RNC vetter said, quote, To be honest, the process was such a disaster and such an S show, and there was... There were so many unqualified people coming through, and then they talked about Ben Carson, who's the secretary of HUD. Uh, he went on to say, you know, I'm like, oh, gentle Ben is unqualified and thinks that pyramids store grain or whatever. Great. At least he's not beating his wife and his wife's not appearing on Oprah. That's a reference to failed Commerce Secretary nominee Andy Puster. Mm -hmm. um, has he learned any lessons since this disastrous process, Sarah? Um, I want to say it's gotten a little bit better. I mean, it's not such a disaster as it was in the very beginning. I mean, remember, it was supposed to be Chris Christie who was in charge of this transition. He got the boot, and then there was essentially no vetting for anyone coming in. It was just such a catastrophe. I mean, we were covering at the time. So I think in some ways it's gotten better. In other ways, I mean, you look at the stuff like the Shanahan story last week, and you can't help but wonder, like, this is these are court documents. I mean, these are public records. This right. is not, like, super top secret stuff you have to go out there and find. You know, if, if investigative journalists are able to dig it up through public records, <laughs> then, then the administration should be the one who's, who's kind of, like, finding that and, and raising those questions early on. Also because it's hard and it's embarrassing for people to go through this process publicly. Yeah, and, and in fact, uh, you're talking about how it might have gotten a little bit better, but I was thinking about this weekend when the guy who was tapped to be the new immigration czar in the White House went on Fox and started openly attacking the acting Homeland Security Secretary, Kevin McAleen, and take a listen. You got the acting Secretary of Homeland Security resisting what ICE is trying to do. Yeah. He does not support this operation. And I tell you what, if, that, if that's his position, then he's on the wrong side of this issue. 
I mean, is it really Cross getting border. better? That guy's going to be, I mean, <laughs> I mean, according to reports, he's going to be the immigration czar. Yeah, I mean, there's... It's not a disciplined operation by any stretch of the imagination. And look, the last time that we went through this, they had a bit of an excuse in that they did not know they were going to win. I mean, that right. was a real that was a real <laughs> issue. And then part of the vetting process, which probably should not have been part of the vetting process, was get rid of people who said maybe some bad things about Donald yeah, Trump. Trump. Right. So that cut down their pool and they ended up with this not good vetting process and a very small pool of people and couldn't get people where they needed. Next time, being the incumbent. That will not be the case because you have to have the expectation that you'll get there. But I have not seen a ton of change or a point person put on this that actually makes that change. Uh, even today, the president's handling a, a very sensitive situation with Iran with an acting defense secretary, Mark Esper, who just started on the job uh, today. Uh, he's got 10 secretaries to be working in an acting capacity right now. And the president believes that having them in acting capacity means that they're sort of trying out for the job. And that's not necessarily <laughs> what you want when you're making life and death decisions at the Defense Department. You don't want someone making decisions on an acting basis, trying out for the job, trying to tell the president what's he, what he wants to hear. You need someone who's confirmed by the Senate, who has the full sort of backing of the Senate in order to make sure that they can present the president with the best information, even, even if it's something that he doesn't want to hear. And it's not clear that that's what the president's getting. He'd rather have people that are more like on The Apprentice, where he can say, you're fired, I'm going right. to take someone else in. And uh, that seems to be how he likes to operate right now. You've actually been through this process, Jen Psaki. Certainly. Um, and I remember also being in the White House during the transition when Chris Christie was fired um, and they, there was nobody to give information to. But I will say what is normal is I remember vetting people for the Supreme Court of when even when there was like eight options in the end. And we each had stacks for each person this big. And this was going through the White House Counsel's Office. So just it's a reminder. It's not normal. This isn't how things should go. Um, and that's why they're not catching things clearly.